this week's guest is the uh, brilliant filmmaker, actor, writer, producer, Mr. Ray Burdis. How are you, Ray? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. And this is a special one for me because uh, we're on the set of your your new film, Mr. Kiss. That's correct. Yeah, uh, we had a good day actually. You just missed. We had a <laughs> troupe of dancers in, and it uh, went down well. It's a good day, and we finished early, so. Yeah. When I finish this, I'll go out the pub. Straight down the pub. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And um, how, how's it been trying to be a filmmaker during a global pandemic for the last two years? Has that been hard work? Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, the last film that I've done, To Be Someone, um, we just were going into the lockdown yeah. pandemic. So I had to do the editing at home. Some of it with Zooms, which I find very frustrating Yeah, because I like to be hands-on and then I convinced my editor to to set up shop in my house <laughs> um, you know which he did he kindly did and then we got it done so that was tough and then of course releasing a film in on the tail end of a pandemic yeah doesn't do the film any favors plus it got terrible reviews but then all <laughs> of my films do anyway so so yeah that was tough that yeah it was tough but you know everyone was up against it wasn't they so it's about the, th the thing is, it, it's a really good film. Do you, do, you, do you worry that it was like a marketing thing with to be somebody? Because th it was being pushed as like Squadrophenia uh, uh, 2, think that's, wasn't it? that's what killed Quadrophenia, it. Squadrophenia, not Squadrophenia. is escape video. Quadrophenia. Quadrophenia, so. yeah. It, that's, I think that's what killed the film. Yeah. Because, you know, it, the pre-sort of press, before the film was made, we let the press believe that it was... Quadrophenia 2. Oh, okay. You played into that. Well, a we bit, just, they said it. I didn't. Yeah. I never said it was Quadrophenia 2 at all. The press just picked up on it because of the cast. And I thought that was a good thing because it had international press, yeah. you know, Hollywood reporters and all that business. And it came back and bit us in the bum um, when the film went out and I goes, that's nothing like Quadrophenia, which of course it wasn't. Yeah. And uh, the critics, um, you know, I always find the critics a bit harsh on me for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but it's the audience choice. You know? yeah. I don't think it was a bad film at all. We had a brilliant cast. Um, it was a bit of fun. Shouldn't be taken too seriously. Yeah. And none of us did. Uh, but, hey, that's what happens with films. Some you win, some you lose. Yeah. You know, and it's just got lost in the ether, I think. Thanks. Should never have been released around that time, mm. you know. Um was part of the reason, I think, and lack of marketing, as yeah. far as I could see. I mean, I suppose in like, you know, in the world we're in, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Where you 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 can do low budget films, but it, you know, if they just get put on Prime and whatever, it's like, it's yeah, hard, it's tough for people to find them if they haven't got a it, massive marketing budget. You know. Yeah, and that, you know, I do understand that. I totally understand it. Um, but there are ways you can get it out there. Yeah. And I've just learned through this film actually, because I'm a bit old fashioned, how important social media is. Yes. And it's good. We got a lot of um like Dan O'Reilly, who aka Dapper Laughs. Yeah. He's got a huge following. And we got quite a few people in the cast that have got huge social media following. So we're gonna use that to get the message out there. The yeah. film's on its way. And it's already uh, getting attention with the press and stuff like that. So let's hope this one I've got a good feeling about this yeah. one, though I shouldn't say. It. <laughs> yeah, you've got a terrible feeling about it. It's going to go badly. Let's <laughs> yeah, let, yeah. let say all those Probably things now, me. but it, yeah. it won't happen. <laughs> and um, so, you, but that's you know that's what you've been doing for the last sort of few years, isn't it? Lots of sort of independent films and get, yeah, you know. I love obviously. Who wouldn't want to do a massive budget Hollywood film? Yeah, um, but I do enjoy making British, you know, yeah. low budget films um i don't know why i couldn't tell you why because you know my fees low is, you know <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know why we do that but no i enjoy doing it you know yeah. and, and we, the cast that come on board everyone they're all working under rate really um because of their passion for the film yeah and for me i'm passionate about film so as long as I'm making them, I'm happy. Yeah, it's brilliant, though. You know that you, that's, you you've sort of made that your your job. You know, where it's like some people don't get a chance to that, and some people like you had a successful TV series for three year, a three series, that 
you know, that could be all someone gets, you know, like yeah. one television series and then nothing else. You know, I suppose you've been lucky in that way that you've got to keep, you've I've, kept doing it for I've 20 years. I've been or... very, very, very lucky. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, sometimes you make your own luck. Yeah. But even at this stage, you know, I was reaching, you know, I'm no spring chicken, I'm 64. Um, you don't look it, you don't I've, look it. I feel it. <laughs> but I kind of lost my drive. Yeah. Right? And I, I teamed up with a guy called Michael Head, who's my partner now in Fugitive Films. Yeah. And uh, he's younger than me, and he's got the drive that I used to have. Yes. And it, it really works. You know, he's very passionate, and he gets he makes things happen. And I think that's going to be a good thing for me yeah. in the next few years. God forbid, you know, yeah. God bless us <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Um, and we'll make some good movies together. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. You know, that's really exciting. Like I say, to go back, the, the, you know, the reason I'm a fan of yours, the reason I fell in love with uh, your comedy and your style of everything is Operation Good Guys, the, yeah. what I was talking about earlier. I don't know if it's, you know, for you, maybe it's too old to talk about or whatever, but I absolutely love that, that show. Yeah, um, it was a bit of a phenomenon, really, because yeah. I used to love a program called Cops. Yeah. Right. And it was an American documentary fly on the wall real series. And I thought, wouldn't it be good? And this is a true story, right? <laughs> it's come out at last, right? I thought, let's make a drama, a scripted sort of drama, improvised scripted yeah. drama. Um, deadly serious about cops, you know, cool cops. And we <laughs> we made a, a pilot or a promo of it, sent it into the BBC. And I got a phone call from Hugo Blick, who at the yeah. time was at the BBC. And phoned me up, he goes, Ray. And I says, yes. He goes, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. And I went, oh, you got it. <laughs> yeah, we meant it to be a comedy. And then it developed from there, you know. Um, and I was really pleased. I loved doing it. Yeah. I, I absolutely loved doing it. And there is talk of us doing the One for the Road movie. Ooh. Of Operation Good Guys. Yes, please. Uh, and it, it just needs, you know, I think it needs, and it, it, deadly serious, this is happening as we speak. We're looking for a young writer who we can transfer our thoughts to. Yeah. To bring, you know, it, he's old. It's old, you know, I don't know, 20 years old or something. Yeah, like 97 that. was the first series, I think. So it needs fresh blood. Using some of the old characters in there, the yeah. main characters, but have fresh blood in there and a fresh approach, you know. Um, and hopefully we will be doing that pretty soon. Oh, that's, that's music to my ears, honestly. Good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely adore that show. And, you know, it's just like you say, there's, there was definitely, come, especially series two and three, there's no question that that was a, a comedy. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anyone could have watched it. Well, you, thought, what was, are these real police? <laughs> well, that happened at the beginning. <laughs> And um, people just didn't get it at first. They yeah. thought, is this some weird documentary or, or, or what? Are we following buffoons? And they gradually fell in, Yeah, gradually fell in. And the BBC are terrific at hanging in there. They got it, you know. Yeah. And they said, let's just keep going because the ratings did plummet from the first two episodes. It, I think it had the biggest downturn in ratings <laughs> in BBC history. But they stuck with it yeah. and it became a very popular, you know, award-winning yeah. series, yeah, which yeah, I'm yeah. very proud of. Well, obviously we're on the set of uh, Mr. Kiss. Mr. Kiss. Is there anything you can tell without spoiling it? Because like you say, we're probably about a year out yeah. from it being released. In, in but... a nutshell, it, it follows a young, two, two guys. Yeah. Right. Charlie Clapham playing the lead and Dan O'Reilly, a.k.a. Duck, Duck of Laughs, yeah. right? And they're two mates. They grew up together. And one followed the path. His family was a criminal uh, crime family. Yeah. So he went off into the crime world and uh, Charlie's character decides it, uh, to go into theatre, go into acting. Yeah. And that's really, from school, he found out that's the quickest way to pull a bird, basically. <laughs> okay. Um, and off he went. He'd become very successful. He was in something the equivalent of EastEnders, but decided he's done five years, time to move on. And he gets offered a part in a film to play a gangster. 
So he asked his friend, do you mind if I shadow you for a week? Yeah. So, you know, I can study your character and I want to make this really real. And then it enters a roller coaster of disaster. He gets dragged further and further and further into the, the world of crime. It is a comedy, yes. you know, an out and out comedy uh, with some dark moments, you know. And that's kind of all I can tell you about okay. that. Okay. It's very intriguing, very, uh, sounds good. And the cast as well. Like when, when you invited me and I was like, I went to IMDb and I was like, oh, oh, wow, oh, wow. And it was like, yeah, it's a great it's cast. It's an amazing cast. But they're very supportive. And yeah. a lot of them, a lot of the cast I grew up with, you know, so we all know each other and pick up the phone, come and do us a favor, come <laughs> and do the film. And they all turned up and they've given it 100%. And that's amazing. Like you say, when you, you know, you're saying like people definitely taking less money than they would normally get or whatever, but they're doing it for you. Like. Yeah, and they're doing it for the love of film and they yeah. like the scripts. You know, if the scripts was crap, they wouldn't. Be, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, sorry, Ray, I'm busy that way. Yeah, <laughs> worse to that effect. <laughs> yeah. No, because you um, obviously back in 1990, you produced for Fugitive, you produced the Craze film, yeah. and um, Martin Kemp's in this. But you've known Martin and Gary for years, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we went to a drama club, it was not really a drama school, yeah, um, together, run by a lady called Anna Scher. And a lot of people have gone through Anna Scher. Yeah, I was going to say, I definitely recognize that. Big name. names, big directors, big actors and actresses. Um, and I knew they could act. Right, they were in Spandau Ballet at the time, so that gave us our international appeal yeah. for a film, and you always have to think of that. Um, and I knew they could act, so I fought hammer, tooth and nail for them because people were going, no, you know, it'd be silly, two pop stars playing the craze. Yeah. Well, look what happened, you know. It was a huge film, yeah. huge success. That's a legendary film, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so I was very proud of that. And I was very proud of the boys, the, the performance that they put in, you know. Yeah. And it, look, here we are today with Martin Kemp in this yeah. film. You know, it's great. <laughs> Still calling in favours 30 years later. Of course, always. <laughs> Every time the phone rings, they pick you up, oh, it's Ray again. What does he want? <laughs> it's always something. But there you go. Behind the camera filming today is my older brother. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh... <laughs> But I, one of the things I, I love about watching your films is waiting for Mark, your brother, oh, to yeah. pop up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you seem to have like a really good relationship with him. And I expect some of the things you made him do in uh, Operation <laughs> Good Guys. I'll do it guys. for fun. I'll do it for fun. <laughs> and he, uh, oh, he's great. And we're very close. And all yeah. my brothers are very, very close. Um, and Mark, he, you know, he'd done his time. He was Stew Pot in, in Grange Hill. Yeah. Um, and I've got him in this film. Okay. I can't do a film without my brother, you know what I mean? Um, but he's great, but I do get him to do outrageous things, <laughs> purely to wind him up, yeah. you know. He does camp really well, you know, so I, I get see, him to do look, camp a lot. The things that specifically stick out to me is uh, him painted red in the Baldy song. Yeah. <laughs> And and uh, when night turns to gay, and you can basically see his testicles in that. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you can. The tiny thong yeah. that he's dancing. In. Yeah, we kind of come up with uh, what what should we put Mark through now? But he does it so well. Yeah, and he pulls it off, and he, he he's a very very funny man, you know, Mark. And uh, that's that's his talent, you know. Yeah. So as long as you've, uh, you're directing, he's going to pop up somewhere. Is that yeah, yeah <laughs> you got to look after him. Of course you do. <laughs> it's, I'm doing the same thing, you know. No, but that's good. That's good. <laughs> well, I love keep that. Keep him in jobs, you know. Keep... <laughs> I think family are everything. And like me, my crew, my actors, it might sound like a wanky director thing to say, but they are like my family. Yeah. And I generally work with the same cast. I generally work with the same crew when, when they're available. Because uh, I feel comfortable that way. I yeah. know my, they've got my back, you know. Um, so I think family is an important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, another Operation Good Guys, uh, Perry Benson's been in this. Yeah, Perry's well, in yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, it's all the other. You put them all out, <laughs> mate. They're all in it, you know. So what? <laughs> but it's lovely, you know. And it's it, like I say, as a fan, it's great to see when people pop up and you're like, oh, they, you know. Yeah, no, it's nice, you know. And it, if they weren't any good, I wouldn't use them. So what's what's next after Mr. the Kiss? Have you? Uh, 
I suppose we, the operation good guys. Yeah, or? we we're not we yet to develop it properly. Operation yeah. good guys. We've got a script. We're not happy with the script, and uh, it's, I just find felt it was a bit old hat. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to modernise that. We've got a couple of um, films on the slate. One called House, which okay. is about house music, which I'd love to do that um, soon. Um, we got quite a lot of stuff. Some of it, again, I can't really tell you what yeah. it is because of uh, it's been developed, and I don't want anyone nicking. <laughs> um, but we got some stuff to do. Per perhaps one more before Christmas. Oh wow! Mm. Like that productive at yeah. the minute, yeah. Because like it seems like Fugitive, I suppose it's with Michael, isn't it? You know, you've uh, he's sort of had a new lease of life just recently, hasn't it? It's yeah, sort of come I, back. To I relaunched the company because it's pedigree company. Yeah. And um, when me and Michael got together, I said, you know, let, let's set up a production company. And I think it was his suggestion. He goes, well, Fugitive, look what you've done in the past. Um, so, yeah, I was stupid, you know. Let's yeah. call it Fugitive, relaunch it. And try and make quality films. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, gratuitous, violent films and, and whatever. That That's what we want to do. Yeah, and, like live on that legacy of yeah, the craze. And, exactly. Um, We've done some love good on stuff. Love Honor and yeah, yeah. So we got to, you know, keep the flag flying. Well, I, on the gratuitous violence, how did you feel about the uh, the Tom Hardy version of like a craze film, the I, legend? Look, obviously Tom Hardy, fantastic actor. And yeah. he... You know, he never met the Crows. The Crows were dead when he, I met them. Yeah. I met them in prison and he got them off to a tee. Uh, and I don't know how he must have seen some video footage or something of them. The the way they spoke and that was yeah. good. I found the film disappointing because what was it about? We've done it. Got yeah. the T-shirt with the Crows. And I couldn't see why I follow, you know, from from his girlfriends or Red. Reggie's girlfriend's point of view. I could, yeah. didn't get the film at all. Did, I think they're making another one or right here. <laughs> Do we need another Craig film? I don't think so. No, I think every story's been mm. told. Mm. It's like you say, like yours, because 32 years ago or something. It's like... And we were lucky, you know, yeah. like, um, and all that come about, it was a book appeared called Profession of Violence. And, yeah. uh, Thought it was intriguing, and we we had connections because I've grown up, you know, on the <laughs> wild side of life. So we had connections to get, yeah. to get to them and meet them, and you know, uh, get them interested in doing a film. Of course, all they were interested in was making money. That's all. Yeah, which was a bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> but um, I'm glad we made it, and we were the first out out the trap with that one. And I can't believe people didn't make the film yeah. before that. So we were lucky, you know, luck was on our side. But it was a good film. Yeah. What did what did they think? Did they like it? No, hated it. <laughs> okay. And it's really weird because you'd vi visit a very aggressive Reggie yeah. in prison who's, you know, not a very nice person whatsoever. Uh, but I had to go through the respect bit, you know. Um, and he was not a very nice man. In fact, he said, you know, I could leave it in my will to have you killed. And I went, well, you know. It's down to you, isn't it? What, what <laughs> yeah. can I say to that? Whereas Ronnie in Broadmoor, which is a sort of surreal setting to do visits in, I suppose he was on Largato or something, but he was a very, very nice, chilled person. Yeah. And all his comments, Reg, Reggie hated it and wanted to take our heads off. And um, Ronnie goes, no, I didn't like the film. And I goes, well, why? And he goes, well, you made my mum swear and my mum never swore. <laughs> And that was it. That was his note. That was what he was upset about. Yeah. yeah. Made me mum swear. I'm sure <laughs> she did, you know. And um, that was that. I lost track a little bit there. What, what am I talking about? <laughs> but, you know, it was interesting for yeah. mate. And uh, I certainly couldn't stomach another one. Everything's been said. Mm. It's, I feel like that because obviously from being in the Midlands is... Uh, you know, it's still a it's still a big thing to to come down to London and whatever. And I feel like every single time I'm in London, someone will be like, "Oh, do you, do you want to hear a story about the craze?" Oh, no. It's like everyone was like on the cliche. farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd have the eight farm if the, all the people run with the craze. <laughs> all liars. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us. You know, My pleasure. it's been really interesting. We got to see you um, filming a few scenes earlier. Yeah, we won't tell them about the scene. No, and we'll. Uh, <laughs> 
we got it from two angles as well, so you won't see what was on the screen, which is probably Thank best for that. YouTube, to be honest. <laughs> but right, Ray, much. thank you ever so much, thank and uh, uh, go go and watch uh, <laughs> go and watch Mr. Kiss and uh, any of Ray's other work. You know, Please it's do. it's well worth it. Thank you. You have to polish yourself, Mark.